good morning everyone and welcome to the class in the previous class we have started our discussion uh, regarding judiciary and rights and in this uh, uh, segment we have uh, discussed about uh, the writ jurisdiction of the supreme court about this uh, writ jurisdiction we have discussed earlier when we were discussing the jurisdiction of the supreme court and uh, this was also discussed under the chapter fundamental rights so we don't need to discuss it uh, again and again and uh, there is uh, one new uh, topic is there and this is called judicial review and uh, in this segment uh, we will read about uh, that uh, judicial review only this uh, in our constitution uh, judicial review is nowhere mentioned still our constitution uh, still our supreme court uh, exercise this uh, power of judicial review actually this uh, what is uh, first of all uh, we should know the meaning of the judicial review then uh, we will understand the source what are the provisions in the indian constitution which uh, give the supreme court the right to judicial review so uh, judicial review what what do we understand by judicial review this is the uh, most important power of the supreme court because uh, it gives uh, power uh, not only to the supreme court but also high courts high courts also uh, have this uh, power of judicial review and under this power uh, the supreme court or the high courts uh, has the power to examine the constitutionality of any law the supreme court or high court has the power to examine the constitutionality of any law law it has the power to examine the constitutionality of any act of the government if any law which is uh, made by the legislature or any act which is uh, done by the executive is uh, inconsistent with the provisions of the constitution it is the um, decision of the court the court uh, thinks that uh, the that a particular law or a particular uh, action of the government is not inconsistent uh, with the provisions of the constitution it is not uh, the law or the action of the government is not according to the provisions of the constitution then in that case the supreme court has the power to declare such law or action of the government as unconstitutional and incapable incapable so this is uh, the meaning of judicial review judicial review means the power of the supreme court or high courts to examine the constitutionality of any law if the court arrives at uh, the conclusion that the law is inconsistent with the provisions of the constitution such a law is declared as unconstitutional and inapplicable the law the action of the government the law of the government is unconstitutional and because it is unconstitutional it cannot be applied it is inapplicable also so uh, what we find mm, this is the power of judicial review and it gives uh, a very great power in the hands of uh, judiciary because in a way we can say that uh, by 
this power the judiciary becomes more important the judiciary becomes more powerful than the executive and uh, the legislature also so this is an important uh, power of the judiciary then uh, what we see that uh, in our constitution there is uh, um, nowhere it is mentioned in the constitution the term judicial review it is not mentioned in our constitution but still uh, our uh, supreme court as well as high court is using this power so what is the source of this power why our uh, judiciary is using this power so <coughs> the source of this power is uh, article 13 article 13 is uh, a part of uh, part 3 of the constitution part 3 of the constitution which deals with the uh, fundamental rights of the citizen starts with uh, article 13 and this article 13 you can see it here article 13 says that uh, the supreme court can declare the concerned law as unconstitutional and therefore unoperational so this uh, is the source of uh, the power of judicial review of the uh, supreme court as well as high court so as our constitution is a written constitution and uh, the supreme court has been given the power that it can strike down any law that goes against the fundamental rights so this is the source of judicial review of the uh, judiciary then there is one more source of this uh, power we know that uh, in india we have a federal government and under the federal government uh, there is a uh, division of power between the center and the state and uh, um, what happens that uh, we have uh, studied uh, when we were uh, uh, discussing the jurisdiction of the supreme court at that time uh, we have discussed the original jurisdiction of the supreme court and uh, the original jurisdiction of the supreme court is uh, uh, include those cases uh, which cannot be uh, entertained in any court other than supreme court they can be heard only in the supreme court and uh, these cases involve the matter regarding Uh, the distribution of power between the center and the state the relationship between the center and the state if there is any kind of conflict between the center and the state or uh, between the states then uh, that matter is the original jurisdiction of the supreme court so uh, uh, what happens that uh, the supreme court is uh, can use its uh, review power if it finds that uh, uh, any law it may be passed by the state legislature or uh, the union legislature okay if the uh, supreme court finds that uh, any law uh, is inconsistent with the distribution of powers as uh, laid down by the constitution the constitution has uh, distributed power between the center and the state and uh, what is happening that uh, the central legislature or the state legislature has made any law and this law is not according to the distribution of power between the center and the state then in that case the court uh, the supreme court has a power to uh, review Uh, has the power to judicial review. Okay, so this is also another source uh, of judicial review. Uh, you can understand it uh, by an example. Um, for example, the central government makes a law. Okay, 
and uh, according to some states uh, the law which has been made by central government is uh, us, uh, is uh, related to a subject from the state list okay uh, the center has made a law on a particular subject but some states are claiming that the law which has been uh, made on a particular subject that subject belongs to state list so in this case what happens that uh, the states can go to the supreme court because the center has overused its power center has according to these states what happened that the center has made law on the uh, subject of state list okay so they will go to the supreme court and uh, if the court finds that uh, whatever charges has been leveled by the states is true yes central government has uh, abused its power it has made law on the subject of a state list then what will happen in that case the court will declare that the law is unconstitutional because it is not according to the distribution of power which is laid down in our constitution so in this sense the review power of the supreme court includes power to review legislation on the ground that they violate fundamental right or on the ground that they violate the federal distribution of power so this is the uh, source of judicial review the first is uh, there sh uh, should not be any law or any action of the government which violate the fundamental rights of the people and the second ground is that uh, there should not be any law uh, or the action of the government which uh, violate the federal distribution of power so on these two grounds on uh, because of these uh, two reasons the supreme court has the power to judicial review the uh, acts and uh, laws and uh, uh, actions of the government okay so we can see that uh, uh, in spite of uh, the fact that uh, in our constitution there is no mention of judicial review still our uh, supreme court and high court is using this uh, power of judicial review so it it it, it is because uh, the supreme court is considered as the protector of the fundamental right so both these power the writ power and review power has made judiciary very powerful in particular the review power means that the judiciary can interpret the constitution and the laws passed by the legislature this power of uh, judicial review is a very mm, ex is very extended power it's very uh, extensive power why it is extensive because it is not simply that uh, uh, mm, the supreme court can declare any law unconstitutional if it is not inconsistent with the constitutional provisions of the uh, constitutional provisions so it, it's not that simple actually this judicial review this right to judicial review give judiciary the power the responsibility to inter interpret the constitution when whenever there is ambiguity whenever there is uh, any provision of the constitution is not clear then in that case it is the responsibility of the judiciary to 
interpret the constitution, interpret the provisions. So, this uh, uh, feature, the red power and the judicial power, enables the judiciary to protect the constitution effectively because uh, they are playing the role of protector of the constitution because if anything uh, happens that is not according to the constitution who will declare it unconstitutional who will declare it inapplicable these will be declared by the supreme court so supreme court is the protector of the constitution there should not be any law the legislature should not make any law or the executive should not uh, um, do any action which is against the provisions of the constitution if the legislature as well as judiciary uh, if the legislature and uh, the executive behaves in that manner then their uh, access will be declared unconstitutional so uh, the Supreme Judiciary is also the protector of the Constitution and this, uh, besides being the protector of the Constitution, it is also the protector of the fundamental rights of the citizens. Okay, so the Judiciary um, is in a uh, enables the judiciary to protect the constitution effectively and to protect the rights of the citizens. The practice of entertaining PIL has further added to the power of the judiciary in protecting the uh, rights of citizens. Because uh, through PIL, what is happening? Through PIL, uh, people are uh, able to file uh, litigation case against uh, anyone though they may not be the victim they are filing the case for someone else on behalf of someone else so in this way what is happening in this way uh, um, the rights of the fundamental rights of the uh, people is being protected by the effort of the judiciary so in this uh, way we can see that uh, by these two powers uh, the red jurisdiction and the review jurisdiction the court has become very very powerful and this uh, power of the court is uh, very positive because uh, because of uh, increased power of the judiciary our constitution is getting protected and not only this, the fundamental right of the people is also getting protected. Now, we will see uh, uh, some information uh, is given, some information is given in the box. Uh, it's regarding the public interest litigation. The practice of public interest litigation is now becoming more and more acceptable in other countries. In many countries now, uh, the judiciary has started this uh, practice of PIL. While many courts across the world, particularly in South Asia and Africa, practice some form of judicial activism comparable to that of Indian judiciary. So it's a it's a trend nowadays that uh, judiciary in all the countries of almost all the countries of uh, South Asia and Africa are uh, um, practicing on some form of judicial activism. And uh, uh, when we see the Constitution of South America, uh, Africa, what we find that uh, in the constitution of South Africa, this public interest litigation 
has been included in the bill of rights so this is important for you to know that uh, in south africa uh, pil has been included incorporated in the bill of rights so in south africa it is a fundamental right of the citizen to bring before the constitutional court cases of violation of other persons right so it is from the beginning it is uh, it has been done it has been done through the constitution that uh, any if there is any kind of violation of uh, fundamental right of people uh, then in that case other person have uh, right to bring the constitutional bring the case before the constitutional court so whenever we uh, discuss pil it is uh, closely associated with one of our fundamental right and that is right against exploitation right against exploitation uh, is uh, a fundamental right which is which which aims at uh, giving protection to the weaker section of the society the children the women okay or uh, the um, poor the workers who belong to poor section of the society so this uh, we all know that in the society only the uh, weaker section of the society is uh, exploited so there is need to protect this weaker section also only and uh, through this right against exploitation our constitution makers has uh, made an effort in this direction because this right to prohibits any kind of forced labor which is called bandhua mazdoor bonded labor then it also prohibits trade in human being there should not be any kind of human trafficking then it prohibits employment of children in hazardous job so uh, these are the sections of labor women children who are getting exploited in a society a society is formed in such a way that uh, um, these sections are vulnerable they are vulnerable group of the society so uh, the constitution has made provision for uh, the protection of their right but if we uh, think then uh, it becomes very difficult that uh, people like uh, uh, labor children women who, who who women also because uh, in many cases still today we find that uh, women empowerment has not been done women is still uh, uh, women still belongs to a uh, weaker section of the society so how can we expect these weaker section of the society to uh, um, they will be able to protect their rights they will be uh, um, there to raise their voice against the exploitation no they will never um, get this courage to raise their voice against injustice raise their voice against exploitation so uh, this right will be meaningless in the absence of pil if pil is not there then this right against exploitation has no meaning because uh, the person who is a uh, uh, a weak person of the society who belongs to the weaker section of the society if he is getting exploited then uh, he or she will not uh, have enough strength inner strength to fight against this exploitation 
what they need they need the support of some other individual or some other groups or organization who can help them who can uh, file petition on behalf of them so this is uh, pil and uh, you know there are so many cases uh, the court considered a whole set of uh, cases uh, like uh, the blinding of the jail inmates by the police the police uh, does uh, so many atrocities on the under trials and uh, this is uh, this cause causes a lot of uh, uh, inhuman activities okay then uh, we see that uh, um, the working condition of the stone quarries is inhuman then sexual exploitation of children is done so so many uh, injustice and exploitation is taking place in the society and these people who are at the center of exploitation who are getting exploited need the support of pil in order to use their fundamental rights now it's a new segment that is judiciary and parliament the court mm, mm, is very has been uh, very active in uh, seeking to prevent subversion of the constitution through political practice, practice. thus areas that were considered beyond the scope of judicial review such as power of the president and governor brought under the purview of the courts so uh, the courts uh, or the judiciary is uh, expanding its uh, jurisdiction and there may be various kinds of uh, political practices which can uh, subvert the constitution but our judiciary has been active in order to prevent this kind of subversion through political practices the judiciary has uh, uh, played the role of uh, the watchdog of the constitution and uh, it used its uh, power in such a way that uh, no political practice uh, should be evolved in such a manner that uh, it can subvert the constitution so uh, what we see that uh, earlier uh, some areas like uh, powers of the president and uh, governor were considered that they are uh, beyond the scope of judicial review though it was not written anywhere in the constitution but it was considered that they are beyond the uh, scope of judicial review but these uh, powers of uh, the president and governor has also brought under the jurisdiction of the court now Uh, when the court is uh, using its uh, judicial review power it can uh, it can uh, uh, take uh, into consideration the powers of the president as well as the governor so it is uh, always expanding and in this uh, we see that uh, many times uh, Uh, especially after 1980 the supreme court actively involved itself in the administration of justice by giving direction to executive agencies the agencies which are executive and it is the function of the executive to give direction to these agencies but instead of uh, uh, judicial in, instead of uh, executive these instructions are coming from the judiciary 
so this is the widening of the jurisdiction of the supreme court it uh, can give direction to cbi it can uh, uh, if there is any kind of uh, corruption um, cases then also it can interfere so uh, in this regard we will see that uh, in our country the supreme court has uh, given direction to cbi to initiate investigation again against politicians and bureaucrats in the hawala case hawala case was there then uh, the narsingha rao case was also very very important then illegal allotment of petrol pump cases etc so uh, the judiciary is giving direction to cbi to initiate investigation against uh, uh, the big politician or uh, the bureaucrats who were involved in hawala case and uh, narsingha rao case and illegal allotment of petrol pump cases so we will discuss uh, some of these cases in the next class and we will continue our discussion